Hello everyone. The electricity which we are talking about has a wide range of uses. You are probably currently sitting in a room. Now if you look up, you will find out that there is a fan above you. There must be a tube light or an electric lamp in the room as well. The laptop or mobile phone which you are using to watch this video, the air conditioner in the room, the refrigerator, the electric heater, all these appliances use electricity for their operations. Now if you rewind your day and look back, you will find out that almost every device which we are using works on electricity. So it would be very difficult for us to live without electricity. Now broadly we can categorize the uses of electricity into three categories. This is based on different effects shown by electric current. First is heating effect of electric current, next is magnetic effect of electric current and the last is chemical effect of electric current. Now different devices use different effects for their operations. The electric heater uses the heating effect of electric current, the electric motor uses the magnetic effect and electroplating uses the chemical effect of electric current. Now we'll be discussing about the magnetic effect in our next chapter, we'll be discussing about the chemical effect in our higher classes. Here we'll be discussing about the heating effect of electric current. Now there are many devices which convert electrical energy into heat energy. So when an electric current passes through an electric bulb, heat is produced. What happens is the filament of this electric bulb gets heated up and then it glows to produce light. So basically in an electric bulb, the electrical energy gets converted into heat energy and light energy. So this effect of heating up of a metallic conductor when an electric current is passed through it is known as the heating effect of electric current. Now why this heating effect is happening? What is the reason behind it? To find out the reason, let's take a metallic conductor and let's apply some potential difference across it. So what will happen? Now as we switch on the battery, the electrons present in the conductor starts moving towards the higher potential or we can say that the positive terminal of the battery. Now during this movement through the conductor, the electrons collide with the atoms which are present in the lattice. Or we can say that they have to overcome the resistance of the conductor. Now in overcoming this resistance or in these collisions, a loss of energy takes place. Now this energy gets converted into heat energy. So we can say that after applying the battery, the electrical energy gets converted into heat energy and thus heating of the conductor takes place. Now let us find out that on what factors does this heat generated in the conductor depends upon. Now as we know that the metallic conductors offer some resistance to the flow of current through it. And some energy is always utilized to overcome this resistance and to maintain the flow of that current through the metallic conductor. Now let's say that V potential is applied to this metallic conductor which flows I current through this conductor. And let's say that the resistance of this conductor is R and the current is flowing for time T. So we can find out that how much amount of charge had flown through that time. This we know. The amount of charge is current into time. So we can find out the charge as Q into Q is equals to current we had supposed to be I and it had flown through time T. Let's say this equation to be equation number one. Now we had also studied the potential difference definition which says that it is the amount of work done required to move Q charge through points A to point B. So we can say that the work done W is Q into V. So we can say that the work done is W is equals to Q into V. Let's say this equation to be equation number two. 
Now we can put the values of q that is i into t into second equation. So w will be equals to i into t into v. Let's say this equation to be question number third. Now this work done appears as the form of heat which is generated in this conductor. So we can also say this work done to be heat generated in the conductor. So this heat generated will be equals to the work done and we represent this heat generated by H. So this H will be equals to this work done and let's rearrange this and it comes out to be V into I into T. So this is the amount of heat which is generated in the conductor if V potential is applied and I current is flowing through it for time T. Now we can apply Ohm's law and put the value of V in this equation. We know that Ohm's law says that potential difference is proportional to current or we can say that V is equals to IR. So we can put the value of V equals to IR in this equation. So it gives H is equals to in place of V we can write I into R from Ohm's law into I into T. So this becomes I square R into T. Now we can again apply Ohm's law and put the value of I which is V upon R in this equation. So let's see what will we get. H will be equals to in place of I we are writing V by R. So this will be V by R whole square into R into T. Now if we solve this, this will be R square. So 1 R will get cancelled and only 1 R will remain in the denominator. So this will be equals to V square by R into T. Now all these three expressions, let's say this expression to be 1, this to be 2 and this to be 3. So these three expressions of heating effect of current are also known as Joule's heating effect of current. Now majorly we use the second equation which says that H is equal to I square RT in the questions. So we can say that the heat which is generated in the conductor depends directly on the square of the amount of current that is flowing through it. Then it depends directly on the resistance of the conductor. Then lastly it depends upon the time through which current is flowing through the conductor.